Hello and welcome to my video on object relational mapping and why an ORM is not always the best choice for developers. First, let's define what an ORM is. An ORM is a technique that allows developers to interact with databases in an object-oriented way. It maps the tables and columns in a database to objects and properties in a programming language such as PHP, Java, c -sharp, and so on. This means that instead of writing SQL queries, developers can use objects and methods provided by the ORM to perform CRUD operations on the data. Many developers choose to use an ORM because they provide a convenient and abstract way to interact with databases. However, some developers still believe that you don't need to learn SQL when using an ORM. An ORM can also help with database migrations and validation of data. However, there are also several reasons why developers may choose not to use an ORM. One reason is that an ORM can be too heavy and complex for simple projects. They may add unnecessary overhead and make the codebase harder to understand and maintain. Additionally, ORMs can also be a source of performance issues, such as slow query execution and high memory usage. Developers may prefer to have more control over the SQL queries being executed in order to optimize performance. Another reason is that ORMs can hide the underlying structure of the database, making it harder to understand the relationships between tables and to write complex queries. The n plus 1 problem is a performance issue that arises when a single request to a database results in multiple separate queries, causing increased strain on the database and slower performance for the application. In the context of an ORM, the problem can occur when the ORM generates separate database queries for each object that needs to be loaded, even if the objects are related and could be loaded with, an, with a single query. To avoid the n plus 1 problem, it's important to be mindful of the queries generated by your ORM and to use techniques uh, like uh, eager loading or batch loading to reduce the number of separate queries. An ORM typically implements the so-called active record pattern. The active record pattern is a way of representing database tables and objects in an object-oriented programming language. Each object or model corresponds to a row in the table and the properties of the object represents the columns of the table. The ORM provides a set of methods to perform CRUD, create, read, update, delete operations on the data, which are mapped to the corresponding SQL statements. In the active record pattern, each object has the ability to persist itself to the database, which means that the object knows how to insert, update or delete itself from the database. This pattern also provides an easy and intuitive way to work with databases, as it allows developers to work with objects and properties instead of writing raw SQL queries. An ORM also implements the unit of work pattern, which is responsible for keeping track of all changes made to the objects and then flushes all the changes to the database in one go. This pattern allows developers to make multiple changes on the objects and persist them all at once instead of making a separate database call for each change. While the active record pattern can be a convenient and intuitive way of working with databases, it also has some drawbacks that make it considered as an anti-pattern by some developers. One issue with the active record pattern is that it can lead to a tight coupling of the domain objects and the database schema. This means that changes to the database schema can have a ripple effect on the domain object and vice versa. This can make the code base harder to maintain and more prone to bugs. Another issue with active record pattern is that it can make it difficult to implement a proper separation of concern. The active record pattern combines the responsibilities of data access and business logic in the same class, which can make it harder to test and can also make the code base harder to understand and maintain. Additionally, the active record pattern can also make it harder to implement more complex business logic, as the objects are tightly bounded to the database schema.
Another drawback is that active record pattern can make it difficult to implement more complex queries using the methods and properties provided by the ORM. However, this can also be difficult to optimize the performance of the queries as this pattern is mainly intended for CRUD operations and simple use cases. So the question is, what could be used instead of an ORM? The first thing that comes to mind for most developers is the use of raw SQL. This approach allows developers to have full control over the SQL code being executed and can provide better performance in certain situations. However, it also poses a potential security risk in form of an SQL injection attack. SQL injection is a type of attack where an attacker is able to insert malicious SQL code into a query, often through user input. If a developer is not careful when constructing and executing raw SQL queries, it can leave the application vulnerable to this type of attack. When considering the use of raw SQL queries, it's important to keep in mind the potential security risks and take appropriate measures to prevent SQL injection attacks. This can include using prepared statements, parameterized queries and input validation. So raw SQL queries can be very powerful, but be aware of the security risk and take the proper measures to prevent SQL injection attacks. For security reasons, however, I would strongly advise against writing plain SQL. An SQL Query Builder is a tool or library that allows the developer to construct SQL queries in a programmatic way, rather than writing raw SQL strings. The Query Builder provides a higher level, more intuitive interface for constructing and executing database queries. And typically it includes functionality for specifying conditions, join operations and other common query elements. The generated SQL queries can be executed against the database to retrieve or manipulate data. Query builders can simplify the process of working with databases and reduce the risk of SQL injection attacks by handling the construction and escaping of SQL strings. This approach gives you more control over the SQL query being executed and allows you to write complex queries more easily. It's a very common practice to use a query builder within a repository class. The main purpose of a repository class is to provide an interface for accessing and manipulating data regardless of the underlying data storage mechanism. The query builder can handle the construction of complex SQL queries making it easier to write and maintain the code that interacts with the database. Additionally, using a query builder within a repository class can help to isolate the application's business logic from the underlying data storage mechanism. This makes it easier to make changes to the schema without affecting the rest of the application. Most query builders use prepared statements by default to protect against SQL injection. A prepared statement is a way of executing a SQL query where placeholders are used to represent the dynamic parts of the query. The placeholders are then replaced with the actual values when the query is executed. Because of the values are separate from the SQL code, it makes it much more difficult for an attacker to insert malicious code into the query. This is because the query builder will escape the input before it is used in the query, making it hard for the attacker to make any malicious change. Note that even if a query builder uses prepared statements, it's still important to validate user input and avoid using untrusted data in SQL queries. In summary, using SQL query builders can help to protect against SQL injection attacks, but developers should still take care to validate user input. Input validation is a must anyway, so it doesn't matter if you use an ORM or a query builder. Testing a repository that uses a query builder can be done in a few different ways, depending on the specific implementation and the testing framework being used. Here are a few examples of how to write tests. One way to test a repository is to write integration tests. This involves creating test cases for each of the methods in the repository or by implementing an HTTP test. 
Before the test runs, test data can be inserted into the affected database tables. Then make the HTTP request to your application and verify that the correct results are returned. Another way to test a repository is to use mocking techniques. I would not recommend to use mocks because you are actually not test the actual queries you are deploying to your server. And too much mocking will make your tests harder to understand and maintain in the long run. A third way to test a repository is to use an in-memory database. This would involve setting up an in-memory database that can be used to check the correct queries and being executed and the, re and the correct data is being returned. Note that using an in-memory database such as SQLite can lead to compatibility issues with your real database server such as MySQL and PostgreSQL. So the test result will never be as good as if you test it with the same database system. Here is a list of SQL query builders for PHP that you may consider, ordered by my personal preference. All these libraries support various database systems, including MySQL, PostgreSQL and SQLite. And they also provide a simple, fluent and intuitive query builder interface, even for very complex queries. It's important to evaluate the different options and choose the one that best fits your needs and preferences. I will provide the links in the video description. A typical query builder does not come with an integrated database migration tool. Pings is an open source database migration tool that allows developers to manage changes to the structure of their databases in a consistent and repeatable way. It provides an easy to use command line interface for defining and executing database migrations. With Pings, developers can write migrations using PHP that is independent of the underlying database engine. Pings also provides a versioning system that allows developers to revert to previous versions of their database. So, what's your conclusion? I think an ORM can be a powerful tool that can make it easier to interact with databases in an object-oriented way. It's good for simple CRUD-based applications. However, an ORM may not be the best choice for all projects and developers may prefer to have a more control over the SQL queries and performance. So I think that the Query Builder provides a more natural, easier and more powerful way to interact with databases. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment sections below.